Good morning. This is Pastor Phil Vickers from First Lutheran Church in Mission Hills, Kansas, bringing you greetings on this Wednesday after Easter, and also a short reflection on the first few chapters of Genesis. I've always been fascinated by the creation narrative as it's found in our book of Genesis. These are chapters that Christians throughout the church's history have interpreted very differently from one another. A great many faithful Christians read these chapters as an absolutely literal description of how the world and life came into being. Other Christians read these stories and ask themselves what might God be teaching us through these stories by way of metaphor. What might these stories mean for our current walk of faith? Whether or not we believe in a literal six-day creation or whether we believe that it took life billions of years to come into existence, I think there are a couple of things that we can say about Genesis that really speak to what our calling is. First, we learn from Genesis that we are here on purpose. Whether or not the mechanics are as exactly as described in the book of Genesis or whether we lean more towards science to describe how life came into existence, we can still believe that we are here because of the design of a loving creator. We are here because God wished for us to have life and to be able to offer back to him the love and adoration which he deserves. We can also say that the book of Genesis describes to us what our goal is for our walk of faith. Before sin comes into picture, life on earth was described in a sense of harmony. There's harmony between Adam and Eve, there's harmony between Adam and Eve and God, and there's harmony between Adam and Eve and creation. It's only sin that disrupts that harmony and brings about the world as we understand it today. The disruption between the man and his wife and God comes in that part of the story that describes them hiding from God. Because of sin, they were no longer free in their own minds to be open to God's presence, but felt that sense of shame which led them to hide themselves away from their loving Father. There's also a disruption between the man and his wife as there is that blame game that is played on whose fault it was that they ate of the fruit which the snake offered them. And the Bible also describes a sense of disruption of the harmony between Adam and Eve and nature itself, as it is said that after the fall, it was only by the sweat of the man's brow that he would earn his bread, where before he had enjoyed the abundance of creation. In those three disruptions of harmony, we see the the seed, the beginning of all the disharmony that we see in the world today, we no longer enter into a situation where we're in perfect harmony with God and completely aligned with God's Word. There's disruption between people. There's disruption between us and nature and creation itself as we, as we, as we take advantage of nature for our own ends. So part of what we see in Genesis is a call to return to Eden, to return to that sense of harmony, to reconnect ourselves with God, to reconnect ourselves with each other, and to reconnect ourselves with God's creation in wholesome ways so that we can experience that harmony which once was enjoyed before the fall. We will never be able to do so perfectly in this world as it is. We still wait upon Christ to make all things right, but in small ways, in very important ways, we can recapture that harmony and live again as we were supposed to live, as live again as God intended us for live, when we reconnect with that harmony. So however you, in your personal devotion, read that book of Genesis, and however literally you wish to interpret the details, come away with those lessons that we are here on purpose, and we have a calling towards reconnecting ourselves in harmony with God, with each other, and with nature. And those are beautiful, beautiful goals indeed. As you have time in your quarantine and in your prayer life, please do reflect on that. 
and how we can travel back to Eden even if we are not able to travel physically anywhere else. Thank you for your time today, and may God bless you. Amen.